Hello everyone and welcome to SG Choice, the show where all the staff of Source Gaming come together and vote on a particular topic. In the last top 10 we focused on the Nintendo owned characters that we thought were a lock for Smash for Switch, but as we all know, Brawl introduced some guest characters. Yes, Brawl. Sonic and Tails won in Melly guys, it was just an April Fools. Anyway, using the same criteria as the last video we decided to rank the likelihood of which third party franchises we think could guest in the next Smash game. And I don't just mean with a trophy or stage, but with a full blown character. Now, third parties are decided on with different criteria, so we had to take this all into account. Legacy, relevance, history with Nintendo, ease of contract, all these were considered when we cast our votes, leaving us with the top 10 most likely third party characters in Smash for Switch. We have a puzzling choice to kick off this list. They aren't really a legacy character to gaming as a whole, and they didn't originate in Japan. But, Banjo and Kazooie definitely left their impact on Nintendo fans. Back on the Nintendo 64, Nintendo owned Rareware, meaning Banjo and Kazooie were, at one point, a Nintendo IP. There is even evidence from Sakurai that they may have appeared in Melee, at least in trophy form. The moveset for these guys is easy. They haven't had a game in a long time, but there is enough to go from from the two Nintendo 64 classics to help these guys put up a fight. And Microsoft has definitely expressed interest if Nintendo would be. I wonder if this will help another franchise later down this list. Everyone knows Namco Bandai. They were the developers of the last Super Smash Bros. and hopefully Smash for Switch as well. Pac-Man already got in to represent them and their arcade history, but if Capcom can have two characters why can't Namco Bandai get their own counterpart to Ryu? In bus Tekken and it's big bad Heiachi to our number 9 spot. Heiachi was already considered for Smash 4, although missed the mark due to Sakurai believing that implementing him would be too difficult. But we've seen his mind change before between games, and Tekken is definitely a popular game with a ton of renown. Plus, being able to get Heiachi fight Ryu would be great, he just got the experience fighting Akuma so he's already well prepared. Now before you object to the inclusion of Ace Attorney Phoenix Wright on this list, you should hear us out. While the series isn't one of those massive icons in gaming, it is in a similar position to our number 10 pick. The series has a deep history with Nintendo, practically an exclusive series ignoring the iOS ports, and is still very relevant today with games coming out on the 3DS and hopefully soon the Switch, quite frequently. Phoenix himself would be a unique character and represents a very distinct part of gaming history, the detective visual novel genre. Nintendo has some stars like Ayumi Takibana and Carl Hyde who could fit this group, but neither have the acclaim of Capcom's top lawyer. There is also a deeper connection to Nintendo as they actually helped create the first game in the series. For more on that though, check out this exclusive interview with Platinum Games at Sushi Inaba, link in the description below. From one Capcom pick to another, we are going from the goofy realm of the courthouse to the sometimes goofy, but usually horrifying, world of Resident Evil. While not the first game in the horror genre, it is by far the most well known and revolutionary. The first game was a PlayStation exclusive, but from the GameCube onwards Resi and Nintendo went together perfectly, with remakes of the first three titles to brand new ones that shaped the series as a whole. Then Revelations came back and kicked butt, showing Resi could still be scary. The question now is, which character? Resident Evil has an ever changing cast, so it's not nearly as simple to pick a star. Do we go with Chris? He is the Martha of the series after all, although his co-star Jill is far more popular. Neither of these two has quite the Nintendo connection that Leon does though, but Wesker is the recurring villain of the series and could add some supernatural elements. Maybe Nemesis to represent the monsters? A Rebecca and Billy tag team like the Ice Climbers? Barry? Maybe not Barry. A lot of people look to Final Fantasy as the iconic RPG series. And while in the West this is practically uncontested, in Japan it is a very different story, as Square Enix own a debatably more iconic RPG series, Dragon Quest. The amount of impact this series has had in Japan is astonishing, and the slime is an iconic symbol that has transcended gaming. References to Dragon Quest are nearly as frequent as JoJo references in Japanese media. Heck, I was even on a Dragon Quest train when I was in Japan. Where's your train, Cloud? The one in the opening credits doesn't count, it doesn't even play Final Fantasy music. Checkmate. 
Dragon Quest suffers from a similar problem to Resident Evil though. Who do you choose? I mentioned slime before, but that's like picking a chocobo or a moogle. And I'll give Cloud something, he is at least seen as an icon up and above the rest of his fellow Final Fantasy protags. I can't really say the same for Erdrick or the protagonist of 8. I'm sure Sakura would have a favourite choice though, and hey, maybe we could get someone who vaguely looks like Goku, that might appease some fans. It's the closest they'll ever get anyway. Oh boy. Please don't shut off the video. I understand why some Smash fans might not be too thrilled about Minecraft and Steve getting into Smash, especially over Banjo and Kazooie, but we cannot act like this isn't a blockbuster of a series, pun intentional. Minecraft is the newest series on this list, but it has managed to outsell every single one of them. According to Wikipedia, the only game to have sold more is Tetris, which is already in Smash via music. Minecraft is huge worldwide, so it has that Japanese relevance, and has appeared on current Nintendo platforms. People cite Steve as not being very memorable a character, or the art style clashing too much, and while I see their complaints, I'm sure Sakura and his team would manage to implement them well. Man, Capcom has a ton of iconic series, but I promise this is the last one. While not selling as much as Resident Evil, Monster Hunter is not a series that should be ignored. It had a huge impact on Nintendo over the last decade, as the series has been one of the biggest third party games on both the 3DS and Wii U. It was Monster Hunter Tri and 4 that helped to bring Monster Hunter to the West, but in Japan the series was already huge thanks to its portability and team based structure. The monsters were iconic and there is a ton of variety for weapons, and with the recent appearance of the Huntress in Marvel vs Capcom Infinite, we now know the team is more open to crossovers. The future of the series on Nintendo is unsure, but that doesn't stop the series legacy for the big end from shining through. Mario and Mega Man were two of the NES's most iconic platformers, but there was a third series that many 80s gamers remember fondly, and that is Castlevania. Konami's Vampire Slaying series is an icon of early gaming, and was a major third party for Nintendo back in the day. While its last few games have been less than stellar, it did get its own TV series on Netflix which could be a sign of a series return, outside of the pachinko parlour. The series has multiple iconic characters between Simon and Richter Belmont, the big bad Dracula, or his son Alucard. Simon is our go-to as he is the hero with the most connection to Nintendo, but Dracula is iconic to the series more than anyone else. Whether you pin the blame on Artsy Omni or his cameo as a trophy in Smash 4, Rayman is undeniably a heavily requested character. He is the Mario for Ubisoft and has been a big player for Nintendo with his debut originally planned for the SNES, and every one of his games releasing on Nintendo hardware. Also, a slightly less known fact regarding Rayman and Nintendo is that in recent years Nintendo have been a publisher for Ubisoft in Japan, publishing Rayman Legends and the Just Dance series. Two companies have a close connection, and so even if Ubisoft are not a Japanese developer, communication between the two would be simple. By the way, we do mean Rayman here, and not the Rabbids. We actually counted them as a separate series, and they came in 17th place overall. Rayman is still more iconic than the Rabbids, and I think this is enough to get him in over them, even if there is arguably a lot more that the Rabbids could bring to the table. Speaking of series that didn't make it into the top 10, here are some honourable mentions. Coming from Nintendo's home of Japan, we wanted to mention Sega's Puyo Puyo series, as well as Level 5's Professor Layton. The latter has had all their games on Nintendo platforms, and is still releasing them today, with Nintendo publishing outside of Japan. As for the former, it is a massive series in Japan with numerous successful titles, and Ali Nadjo was one of the most requested characters in the Japanese Smash Ballad. It just suffers from a lack of notoriety outside of Japan. Thanks a lot, Robotnik. Now jumping over to the west, we have Tomb Raider and Crash Bandicoot. Tomb Raider is currently owned by Square Enix, a Japanese company, and is an icon of late 90s gaming. While Lara Croft started as a PlayStation heroine, she still saw a handful of titles over on Nintendo's handhelds and the Wii. But it is still very much Sony, which is the same issue that Crash has. He is a PlayStation icon, even if Activision owns him instead. However, he is very popular in Japan, and his most recent revival did incredibly well showing he still has a place and legacy within gaming culture. Lastly, we have Shovel Knight. While the series could make for a nice Nindy representative, that isn't why he got as high as he did. This is because Nintendo published the series in Japan, and it has a very strong connection to the big N, with the Switch version selling incredibly well. 
However, he is still a small icon, all things considered, so maybe his place is better suited as a Mii Fighter costume. We'll just have to see, but after we've covered number one, of course. Quick insert here. Uh, we forgot to add Metal Gear to our voting, despite doing veterans in the last video. Whoops. We gave Snake a quick last minute poll like we did Alf prior, and the majority vote went to not likely to return. However, I should stress this has nothing to do with Konami. Most people who assume that Konami would say no to Snake just to spite Kojima don't understand really how this stuff works. Konami won't turn down money and exposure, and Smash is some of the best for that. For whatever reason it was, Sakurai decided not to include him. In fact, he didn't even ask. If I had to guess, I would say that Smash is still a Nintendo game, and so they can't just keep adding guests. They have to funnel them through and replace others, with a couple key characters remaining behind each time. So Snake's lack of major Nintendo relevance, especially when compared to Sonic, is why he moved on and is unlikely to return, short of bringing back every missing veteran. Speaking of Konami, they were one of the first developers to support the Switch, and they did so with the latest instalment in a fan-favourite multiplayer series, Bomberman. Bomberman is a huge series all across the world, and despite belief that he went on hiatus until this year, which isn't true, he is still seen as an icon of gaming. Bomberman is incredibly popular among Nintendo fans, and is recognisable to even non-gamers. His formula has been copied multiple times, and he just fits Smash. While his position isn't as much as a lock as number one in the last video was, we feel confident in saying he has a very good chance. He checks all the boxes for a guest character, and that is what matters. But really, any of these characters have a chance. It all comes down to Sakurai and what he feels Smash is lacking and who is deserving. Smash is still a Nintendo game though, so the guest characters will remain limited. But as we go forward, more and more iconic guests will appear, creating hype on the same levels that Cloud and Mega Man did years before. But those were our picks for the most likely third party guest stars, so why don't you let us know your picks in the comments below. If you liked this video, then share it with your friends, give us a like and subscribe, if you haven't already. If you're feeling very generous, then head over to source-gaming.com and hit that donate tab to be taken to our Patreon. Every penny helps us to improve our work and produce higher quality videos, theories and research articles for all of you. Until next time guys, always remember to return to the source. <laughs>